Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn what is the difference between direct and indirect configuration. So first of all, we need to understand what is SSIS configuration. SSIS configuration is the way to make your packages more dynamic. When I say dynamic, what does that mean? You are creating your packages on dev or local machine and then need to deploy on SIT, UAT production. So you do not want to make your changes in your packages for each of the environments such as server name, database name and passing some environment, uh, some variable values. So what you want to do, you want to have a way to pass the values according to the environment but do not want to make the changes in the package itself. So SSIS configuration is that component or part of SSIS package that provide us this facility. So now what is the difference between direct and indirect configuration? So when we create our SSIS package and we are uh, using some different type of configuration that can be XML, that can be SQL Server, and uh, there could be other. But we are in this scenario, we are only considering XML and SQL Server. So if you are uh, creating XML file and you are putting that file on C drive, and then you need to move that package to the SIT, UAT, QA or production environment, you have to have that path uh, exactly the same path what you have on your local or on your dev machine. Otherwise, the package will not be able to read this configuration file. So each on each of the environment, you will be moving your XML file to the C drive. And that sometimes is not possible because those C drives, D drives, E drives, maybe they are not available on different environments. In the same scenario, let's say we are using SQL Server configuration. In that case, we are providing the server name and a database name. Database name can be same on all of the environments, but server name cannot be or it is not going to be the same. Most of the time when they have SQL Server, they always have dev, they put UAT at the end and QA and, and prod. Even they don't put the, you know, uh, these prod word maybe in the SQL Server instance name, but they, they, they will not be matching exact with the instance name on dev, UAT and production inst instance. So then what you have to do, you have to have make changes before you m move your package from one environment to another environment and use the configuration. That is the direct configuration when you are pointing to a file or SQL Server directly to read the configuration. Now that, that, that has some drawbacks, but in, in the indirect configuration that provides us the solution. What we do in this, we create an environment variable that will hold the value of folder structure or folder path where our XML is going to be saved. Where we can also, if we are using SQL Server configuration, we can save the um, server name and uh, uh, database name in the environmental variable. So each time our package will run, it will read the very first thing, the value from the environmental variable from the related environment. Once it read it, then on each of the environment, we can, we can point to the correct uh, SQL server or uh, correct XML file path. There, there are some, uh, you know, ways we can make uh, the direct integration to work, uh, but uh, I, I prefer doing indirect. Let me tell you, let's say we have a direct configuration. If we have C drive on all of the environments, uh, what we can do, we can, yes, we can directly move our SSIS packet to any environment and always read from the C drive and have XML configuration file there. But it's, it's not always the possibility to have C drive. Okay, so or some some other solutions what we have people create different UNC path and they have the UNC path and they create folder for QA for SIT for UAT and uh, for production and then what they do they go on each of the environment and map to the same drive name. So what that how that helps then in on your local you create also a map drive let's say you create a P drive and then put your all configuration file there. So when you move to the QA, it will be able to find a P drive. You even you will be moving your XML file to some UNC path that is mapped to P drive on your QA. 
so that's one way to make the things work but if you ask me what you prefer i will i will go with the indirect configuration where you create environmental variable with the same name on all all of the environments one time and then have the path for your configuration that can be xml path for the file or that can have sql server uh, connection that, that that will be consisting of sql server instance name and database name so if somebody asks you this question you know you can answer in you know, whole detail you know what what i explained and uh, let them know what are the options we have uh, i want to move forward with the one small note here whatever the configuration i was talking about i was talking about ssis 2005 and 2008 and 2008 r2 now with sql server integration services 2012 and 2014 as we have project deployment so we do not have the package uh, we, 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 we also have a package deployment but let's say if we are doing a project deployment so in project deployment we are moving our packages to the SSIS catalog that's a repository where your packages are going to store and then in the repository you have environments and the environments can be created for dev for SIT, UAT and production and you can use the variable you can use the make the changes in the connection manager in each of the environmental environment so you, the, the concept of uh, uh, indirect and direct uh, uh, SSIS configuration is really not valid in uh, two, uh, 2012 and 2014 SSIS uh, but if you are still using package deployment in uh, uh, SSIS 2012 and uh, SSIS 2014 yes then you have to come up with the direct or indirect SSIS configuration thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in next video